Hello and welcome to this section. In this section, we learn about two-dimensional array. In this section, we mainly include the following knowledge points. First, we will talk about the introduction of two-dimensional array, then we will talk about the common use scenarios of two-dimensional array. Finally, we will talk about the basic use of two-dimensional array combining its property and action. First of all, we come to the first chapter, two-dimensional array, and its widget introduction. As the name implies, two-dimensional array is a data table with multiple rows and columns. Each column has the same element type, and each element can save an independent value. A two-dimensional array can be regarded as an array composed of nested one-dimensional arrays. In essence, it is an array with one-dimensional arrays as its elements, that is, an array of arrays. After one-dimensional arrays are stacked, they can form our two-dimensional array. Each value of the two-dimensional array can be read through index numbers. Its format is the name of the two-dimensional array. The x, y in the brackets he code, and y is its line number and column number. Next, let's talk about the usage scenario of two-dimensional array. Generally speaking, a two-dimensional array is usually used to store a data table because it has a regular row and column structure. Similar to our Excel table, the table is used to store data located using two dimensions. For example, our student information table can contain the name, age, enrollment time, photo and other information of each student. Then we can use our two-dimensional array to store it and use the two-dimensional array to cooperate with the loop creation container to generate our data table. How to use our loop creation to cooperate with our two-dimensional array dimension group, which we will explain in detail in our loop creation container. You should pay attention here. As a data widget, two-dimensional array is not particularly common. Because two-dimensional array is not as easy as our object array in our understanding and use, so most of its scenes are replaced by our object array. So the scene we talked about here is that when we talk about the object array, we will tell you again. Next, we will see how to use our two-dimensional array. Similarly, we should open our editor. Enter our two-dimensional array in the name of our application and click our create button to form a good habit. We should first add a page under the front end and then we add our two-dimensional array under the page. As we mentioned in the concept before, the essence of two-dimensional array is actually every element in the one-dimensional array, which is a dimension group, so it is a stacked element the digit group becomes a 3 times 3, which must be our two-dimensional array. So here we click to add our two-dimensional array. We select our two-dimensional array to see its properties. Similarly, it is always very similar to our one-digit number. You see, it can also allow us to add a horizontal column structure. It is convenient for us to understand here. We can also add such one digit number for comparison. You can note that one dimensional array can add a field value of each column, but it is different in our two dimensional array. In addition to adding the field value of each column, does it have a plus sign here? What does the plus sign mean? That is, it can add more rows of such data. Here, uh, let's first establish the column structure. Here we will quote the structure of PPT. We will build a structure similar to that of PPT. We will fix it, intercept it, and put it here. First, what is the element in the first line? Is it our name, right? So here we add a string type, change the name to our name, and then type it again. Next is age. Will age be used for calculation? will be used for calculation, right? Because the age of each of our users may be in the next year, we ask him to perform a self-increment operation. Therefore, we generally store his age with our numerical variables, so here is our age. Next, he has an enrollment time, ah, and the enrollment time may have to be calculated, because he may have to calculate the user's last enrollment years, so he may subtract his enrollment year from other current years. So here, ah, we also use our numerical variables to store an enrollment time, which is our enrollment time. Similarly, we also need to store a photo. What is the photo? Is the photo our resource type? Here, we change the name to our photo. The essence of the photo is actually a string of ours, but after we change it to our resource type, it is convenient for us to upload one of his photos directly, 
and it will directly send as the photo is displayed here. What it actually stores is a relative address of our photo. In this way, after we connect one of its field types, it will be different. Next, we can see that there is a plus sign. What does the plus sign mean? In fact, it's just like our Excel. Here we have established a name of a field. Next, we'll define how many rows of data it has, right? Here, we click a plus sign, and we can also see that our zeroth row of data comes out. Here, let's also write in its geographic bank data. This is our Zhang San. The same age is our 20, and then the enrollment time is 2018. Then we upload the photos here. Here we upload such a baseball instead of Zhang San's head. Then there is another Li Si, age 21, in 2016. Suddenly, we uploaded another baseball instead. Here is a plus sign to add a row of data. You can pay attention to it. This is also a very important point in our two-dimensional array. Even such a property, in fact, is very common in our array, that is, we can see that when we define it, we define one type of its property in each column at the beginning, and the property types of each column are completely consistent. You see, for example, the name class is all S, which is what is our string type, and the age class is all N, which is our numerical type, so note that no matter a number of any complex structure we see later, whether it is our binary number or our object array, the data structure of each column is completely consistent, and it cannot be used in a modification is made in the middle of the way. So we have completed the editing of a basic two-dimensional array. Then there are some convenient operations here. For example, you can see that there is an import data and an export data here. Here, we first select export as XLX. You can see that it naturally imports our data into a seal. We can open it. You can see whether such an open structure is a name or the age, enrollment time, and its corresponding photos all here. Then did I say that the essence of a photo is actually an address of a picture of it? Just here, we spliced the path of a server according to such a picture address, displayed one of his photos, and then the same if you were originally in addition, we can also import data. For example, for an Excel table that we just exported, you can directly make some modifications in the table. After you have made all the modifications, you can import it again, and then we can import it into the Excel that you just exported, you can notice what we have seen here so far. Is it a relative address of the photo? Here, if we want a photo to be displayed, we can register again and modify its type. We can modify it to a resource type. We can also see that such a type becomes a resource type. Similarly, we can change an enrollment time here into a string type. We want to make a modification click inside, and it will become a numeric type. You can see that its upper right corner will become an N. At the same age, we can also make a modification. For example, it is a numeric type, and then click N, it will all become a numeric type. Let's think about what would happen if I turned a field of this name into a numeric type. Is it all empty? Because there is no way to forcibly convert a series of values just now, it will be cleared. Here, ah, uh, let's re-import a data just now. Let's change such a type into a word resource. Similarly, change his enrollment time and his age into a numerical type, so that our to the dimension group completes the setting of a value. Next, let's see how to use a series of actions in the two-dimensional array. In the same way, we should add a button at the bottom of the page. Let's see what action it has. We trigger it by clicking on the event. We select a two-dimensional array. The first action in an action is our printing current value. In fact, we have seen the printing current value. Here we directly print such a paper let's have a look. Let's read it directly here. Similarly, right-click a check, and then switch to control here. We can see that it becomes the value of a two-dimensional array. What does this 3 mean? Let's think about it. What is this 3? Have we learned before? The so-called 3 proves that it is currently in a structure of an array, and it has 3 rows of such data. What does the 3 represent? We intercept our 2-dimensional number to facilitate our understanding. Does this 301203 represent a 2-bit array with 3 rows of data, 
so we can also expand it to see that the number of 0, 1, 2, 3 rows will come out. Then we expand an element. For example, we expand D0 and 8A to see 0, 1, 2, 3. What is 0, 1, 2, 3? Prove that it has four columns of data, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 1 has four data in total, which corresponds to four columns of data such as 0, 1, 2, 3. So do we have a better understanding, that is, our whole two-dimensional array has a one-dimensional array first. For example, we now have a 0 equal to Zhang Sen 1 is equal to 20, the second data equal to a 218, and a data in the third column is called such a picture address, which is it a one-dimensional array of. Then, the one-dimensional array becomes a whole element of another one-dimensional array, which is equivalent to another one-dimensional array. Each unit in it is equivalent to a one-dimensional array. If it is spliced in this way, it will become a two-dimensional group. Therefore, for us, ah, such a two-dimensional array is actually our one-dimensional array a process of splicing an array. Here, let's understand it again. First, the three outside represent 0, 12. How many lines of data does it have? When it is opened, what does a 44 represent? It has several columns of such data, so it is currently a data structure with three rows and four columns. A total of 12 values are stored in such a two-dimensional array, corresponding to 3, 4 and 10 on our side a content of 22 values, so the function of the first button is our printing, and then we add another button, and then the value is our assignment. Here we have a better understanding of the essence of two-dimensional array, and whether we can assign a value to our two-dimensional array. The second element is an array such as bracket 456. In this way, each array of the two arrays is enclosed as an element, and the external array is defined. Therefore, this becomes a new value of our two-dimensional array. Then we print the value of the two-dimensional array, and let's preview the result. Next, we directly copy it and print it. You can see that the value of the two-dimensional array becomes a 22. What is it? The second is to prove that if you look at an element, what is the second of two elements? Prove that it has two lines of such elements, right? Let's expand. You can see that it's 123 in his movie bank. Why did you see 123 come out like this in the movie bank, right? Similarly, there are 456 in the first line. How did it come from? Is that a 456 right here? Therefore, for a two-dimensional array, it itself takes an element of a one-dimensional array as an array, which is equivalent to that one of the arrays is an element in a bit array, and then the other array is also an element in a bit array. After a splicing, we complete a two-dimensional array like ours. So when we assign a value, we should also assign a value according to such a structure, and then look down on its next action. We trigger it by clicking on the event. When this button is clicked, we trigger our two-dimensional array, and let it perform an operation to add a value. What is the meaning of adding a value? In fact, adding a value is to select a line number where we add a data for it. For example, in addition to the name, age and admission time photos, it also needs to have a native place data, but we only add this native place data to one person. For example, here, ah, uh, we add a native place to Zhang San on number zero, what's his flight number? We can see it. It's on the zero, right? So if we write zero in the line number, then his native place is Chengdu. Where does he want to add it? This is the head, right? This is the end of the line, so we are at the end of the line. So when we click, we will add such geographic bank data, which is equivalent to adding such bank data as Chengdu to our preview. You can see one of the effects. First, we will hit its original value. Is the original value Zhang San 20 in line D0? Then in 2018, after we click to add a value, we print such a value. We can see whether the value of the first element is one more. Why is the first element one more? Because we performed an operation to add a value to a two dimensional array with a line number of zero, so far, ah, its first value is one more. You can see that ah, it becomes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here, there is one more value like Chengdu. This is a way for us to add a value. In fact, 
The so-called adding value means that we first select a line number to add a data. For example, we D0 seem to add a data. We enter 0 here, and then the value to be added is written here. Finally, if you want to add it to the head, you can select it as the head of the line, and then add it to the end, and then select it as the end of the line. This is what we add at a usage of value, and then we add a button. Let's see what other usage it has. Similarly, we trigger it by clicking on the event. When it is clicked, we call the next content of the two-dimensional array. This is called adding a row of data. A row of data is totally different from the added value because it is a complete addition of the content of a row the elements in a row are added. To add a row of elements, click the plus sign to add another row of elements. Therefore, here we click to add a row of elements, and then in his row, you want to write the value of your row of elements, and then you want to add it to the beginning or end. You make a choice here. Here, for example, we add a line of elements at the end. What is the single element added here? Is it our one-dimensional array? So here we write the value of a one-dimensional array. For example, we put parentheses. The first value is called our photo 6, and then the same second element. We put a comma on it, that is, our 22-year-old. Then his year of enrollment is 2013, and he needs a picture, we won't write it here. We just add a null value to it. What's this? Is this a way to write our one-dimensional array, so it's more certain here? The essence of our two-dimensional array is that a one-dimensional array is spliced one layer, and another layer is added here, which is our two-dimensional array. So here, uh, we add a line of elements, that is, we add another one-dimensional array, and then I let's print our two-dimensional array elements. Let's see a value of the two-dimensional array. Here we click a preview. Here we can take a look through the event. We can also see that there is an additional line of elements here, that is, our Zhao 6222013, and its image is empty. Is such a line added? We can notice that the whole number of lines has changed so far. It was 012. There are three lines in total, right? Since we used to add a line element, does it now become a four line element? and one of its elements in the third line is megabyte 622-2013 null is a value like this. This is a usage method to add a row of elements. Next, we add a button to trigger its next event. Similarly, when it is clicked, we call our two-dimensional array to let it perform a method to add multiple rows of elements. Is this the structure of a two-dimensional array? Let's add another one here. Let's add another one here. Let's add a filler here. Change the value of the same one again. For example, he is 23 years old, and he passed in 2018. Then we don't want the picture here. We'd better let him add it to the end. You can notice that since it is multi-line data, each row element in it is our single digit. Since the group needs multiple rows of data, it is at least one of our two-dimensional arrays. Then here we click the plus sign on our two-dimensional array and let it perform a method of printing the current value so we can have a preview. Similarly, let's first look at the original paper. It is a three-line element and then click add multi-line element to see that it has become a five-line element. 012345, you see, an end such as Zhao Liu and Tian Qi is added to accuse him. This is a method of adding multi-line elements. Here is mainly for you to understand the data structure. We add a line of elements. Here, we input a one-dimensional array. Why? Because for our two-dimensional array, when you look at each element, it is very obvious whether each element is a single array. Therefore, here, we need to add an element, which is equivalent to writing a one-bit array structure. Since we need to add multiple elements, it is at least two elements, right? First, separate the two elements with commas. What we must do here is to write in the value of one of our two-dimensional arrays. Similarly, we can use the event here to adjust and use his next action. When the button is clicked here, we will perform the action of two-dimensional arrays. This way, we can insert a row of data and insert multiple rows of data whether the input multiple rows of data is exactly the same as the data we just added. 
Let's just demonstrate here. Let's copy here and paste here. You can see that it is multiple rows. Since there are more data, each cell is a one-dimensional array with multiple rows. It is sure to write a two-dimensional array cell here go ahead, and the inserted index is exactly the same as what we wrote just now. Insert it wherever you want to replace it. For example, I don't like Lee 4 very much for a long time. I want to insert it in the first line, and let Lee 4 and Wang Wu all run to the back. Then we will insert it directly in the first place, and here we will let the two-digit array print its current value. Here we will preview it and look at the original value, in the three lines, Zhang San, Li Si and Wang Wu can be seen after we insert them. Why didn't Zhang San, Li Si and Wang Wu insert them in the back? Because I want to insert the first one, so do Zhao Liu and Tian Qi insert them from the first one, so Zhao Liu and Tian Qi replace them here, and then Li Si and Wang Wu come to the back. Here is a usage of inserting data, and then we add another button. Let's take a look at his next event. Similarly, when this button is clicked, we let it perform an operation of adding columns to a two-dimensional array, which is very interesting, because there is no such scene in our one-digit number that allows us to add columns, right? You can see whether we just inserted a row of data, or added a row of data, did we click the plus sign here? Now we insert the column area, which is equivalent to clicking the plus sign on the right, right? Let's take a look first. What if we click on a Java on the right here? Will there be an additional column of such data in it, but there is no initial value of the data in it, right? So if we choose to add force here, how do we operate? Let's insert this straight line and remove this line. How do we operate? You can see here that it asks you to write a value. What is the value here? It is equivalent to an initial value you want to fill in this column. For example, if we come to Chengdu here, it is equivalent to that all people add a native place. Then here, he will let you select the end, and here we will select an end. Similarly, we will let our two-digit array print its current value, and then we will carry out a preview. Let's look at the initial value. It has three rows of data, and then there are four columns. Then when we insert it, we can see that it still has only three rows of data, but how many columns error, the value is written as five, so it has five columns. We can open it to see if it is followed by another Chengdu. This is how we insert the column, and the value you write in the inserted column will be used as a filling value to add such a value to each such element again, we add a button, and we will learn the next series of event. Similarly, when it is clicked, we still choose our two-dimensional array and then our method of deletion. Deleting it also has one more method than our one-bit array. It can delete classes. First, let's click our delete line. Deleting a line is to delete it according to the line number. For example, now I see that Li Si has been unhappy for a long time. Here, let's click one, and he will delete a data such as our first line. When we see that we still need to delete it is to trigger our two-dimensional array to print the current value. Let's have a look. By default, you can see that it has three columns of data. When I click, you can see that there are only two columns of data, and whether such a row of data of Li Si has been completely deleted? ER the same, we add a button to trigger a series of events. When it is clicked, we call an operation to delete a column in our two-dimensional array. Note that you can delete a subscript of the column number in the two-dimensional array. Here we have a preview. When printing, we can see that the current structure is about 3 times 4. When I click on it, it will become 3 times 3, and I can expand it to see if the column of all his photos has been deleted by us. This is the operation of deleting the column. Then we add another button on the same side. Let's take a look at its next event. When it is clicked, we will execute it as a two-dimensional array. As we can see, it has a series of operations such as setting a certain value, setting multiple values, and setting multiple values across lines. It also includes our setting of line filling and filling rate. In fact, this series is all me we set a series of operations. For example, it sets a certain value. For example, here, I found that Li Si's age is wrong. He is not 21 years old. In fact, he is 25 years old this year. 
how can we change it? We need to write its row number and its column number and then set its value. Let's see how many rows Li Si is in, 0, 1, right? So the first row, ah, counts its row number vertically. What column is its age in the first row? The name is in the zero column, and the age is in the first column, so his age is in the first column. Similarly, we change his age. He is now 25 years old. In this way, do we get the corresponding coordinates through a relationship between abscissa and ordinate, that is, its line number, and a good method, and then get the corresponding coordinates after that, we can modify one of its values. Here we set it to 25 and so on. After finishing this series of operations, we will perform an operation to print the value of the day on the two-dimensional array. Let's take a look at the preview. At the beginning, Li Si was a young guy. He was only 21 years old. When we click the setting, we'll take a look again. You can see that Li Si Tai has become a 25-year-old guy. Similarly, we add a button to test. When it is clicked, we also ask it to execute one in the two-dimensional array series action. There are also set values here. This is the use of setting multiple values in the same row. What do you mean? You need to configure multiple values, but they are all in the same line, so you can write its line number here. For example, I found that Li Si's information was completely wrong. In addition to his age, his enrollment time was also wrong, so what's his cross sign here? 0, 1, right? So here's 1. What's his column? What's his age? 0, 1, so one of his ages on the first page should be 25. What if I want to set another enrollment time? I click a plus sign here. Is the second column 0, 12 of the plus sign his enrollment time? So here we go to make a copy of him. In fact, he has been employed since 2011. This is equivalent to being in a peer. When we lock a line number, it is a setting of different types, that is, multiple settings are just one of the peer's usage. Similarly, here we can print the value of the two-dimensional array. Let's take another look. First print its original value here. You can see that Li Si was originally a 21-year-old young man who joined the job in 2016. When I click again, he becomes a 25-year-old boy who has entered the school in 2011. Similarly, we add a button. We go to see its next element. When it is clicked, we execute it the same way row our binary array. Another content here is that we set multiple values across rows. Since they are across rows, we must configure both rows and columns. For example, I found that Li Si's age and Wang Wu's enrollment time are wrong. What should I do? First of all, let's decide where Li Si's age is. He's in the first column of the first row, isn't he? So one of his ages here is 25. Then I found that Wang Wu's enrollment time is also wrong. How much is Wang Wu 012, right? What column is the second row? 012A, right? Such an admission time, it's in the second column, right? Therefore, one of the enrollment time of the second choice here is 2014. In this way, do I set multiple values? In fact, here we set multiple values, cross line and our values, and then you directly copy one and paste it. The usage here is exactly the same. If you want to set the same settings as ours, it is a second line and second column. Then one of his enrollment time is 2014. Your design is exactly the same, but it doesn't look good well, so we put out such an action for you. You can set multiple values across lines, and then you can click the plus sign here. In this way, we have completed a method to set multiple values across lines. In the same way, we can print a two-dimensional array, print the value, and let's have a preview. Similarly, after we make a setting, we can find that the value here has become an entry in 2014, and his age has changed from 21 to 25. Here is how we set multiple values. Therefore, for our entire two-dimensional array, A is its structure. You must learn how to count and locate an element. First, count the row in which it is located. After 0, 12 is determined by its subscript, and then determine its column. 
The column is determined from the perspective of 0 12, and then through its row and column after determining this element, you can set it by setting the value. Dot. We also need to write a 1 bit array here. For example, the value here, ah, we will directly replace it with the value in the row we added just now, that is, we will copy it directly. Is it possible for us to paste a number like Zhao Liu and bring it here, so that he can replace the value that we are currently in a good condition? Similarly, we will perform an operation to print the current value for our two-dimensional array. Let's preview again. Is it such a content in our initial stage? Look at a picture 3 Li, for Wang and 5. When I was replacing it, it became Zhang San, Zhao Liu and Wang Wu. This is how we set up the bank. Then we add another button to trigger a series of events through the button. When it is clicked, we choose our two-dimensional array to let it perform what operation. In addition to setting rows, can it be filled? What does it mean to fill rows? Is to fill a row of a two-dimensional array with a piece of paper. Of course, if there is such a scenario, you will use it like this. For example, such a C is in the first line of 0, 1, right? It is all changed to a value of a qui, so at present, when printing later, all the values of C will become a qui. Similarly, we choose our two-dimensional array to print its current value. We can see that at the beginning, a series of systems of Zhang San, Li Si, Wang Wu are OK, and then I will fill it in. ER, when we expand, we can see, ah, whether the values of column 1, column 2, column 3, and column 4 are all filled by QW, and then this is a way for us to fill a row. Similarly, we use a button to trigger its next event. When it is clicked, we call our two-dimensional array to perform a usage of filling column. In fact, we can also guess the filling rate of the filling row just seen. For example, 0, 1, 2, 3, for such a photo, I don't want it anymore give me an empty, so 0, 1, 2, 3, right? If the value in the third column is completely empty, it will be set to such a quotation mark. If it is caused by a single quotation mark, it will be all empty. Let's fill it again and have a look and then print it out. You can see that all the current photos are 0, 1, 2, 3. Is the third column filled with empty values? This is a usage we use to fill in the column, and then we click another button on the same side to trigger its next event. When it is clicked, we will select our 2-bit array to perform a series of actions. Firstly, a very useful function called our filter output appears here. After our top screening book, we will tell you that there is a screening condition. Here, we can do a series of simple front-end output values. For example, here, we hope to screen all such contents older than 22. What is the name of one column here? Is such a name column a spirit column? The age column is the first column, so let's take its age in the first column. What should it do? It is larger than our 22, so we can ignore its sorting method first. For example, if I only need such a row of data, when it is finished, we will let our application system make a debugging record. Let's take a look at such a series of values of its output results. Let's take a look. When it makes a preview, click it to see that it outputs an array. What is the array? It's our King 5. Why did King 5 come out? Is King 5 in our conditions? The first column is our age. In our first column, is the only one greater than 22 our King 5? So he screened him out. Of course, we can also relax the screening conditions here, so we don't limit the number of lines here. We ask him to output all the values that we have greater than 20. Let's have a look at the same side and have a preview. When we click, we can see that it outputs a two-dimensional array. Why does it output a two-dimensional array? Group. As you can see, in our first column, you can see the zero column, the first column, and the first column. What is our age column is equivalent to filtering our age column. A value greater than 20 is output. Therefore, he outputs all Li Si and Wang Wu. Of course, we can also conduct a multi-condition screening here. For example, in addition to our age limit, we also have to limit the enrollment time. Here is the first, second and second column of D10. You see, what it asks us to write here is the column name, right? 
For our two-dimensional array, its column name is a sequence number of one of its columns. Therefore, in the second column of the first column, and the second column, we want to make one of his enrollment age greater than 2015, which is equivalent to two criteria screening. It requires that one of our ages is greater than 20, and our enrollment time in the second column is greater than 2015. Let me let's have a preview. The same screening under such a screening condition, he just screened out such a data, that is, our Lee 4, which not only met the requirements of more than 2015, but also met the requirements of more than 20 years old. Please note that this is a simple way for us to conduct a front-end screening. Of course, most of such a screening will still pass our back-end screening the service performs a calculation, but here we simply provide you with a method to filter the output of the front-end. Similarly, we add a button, and we will talk about its next action. If we click it, we can see. Now we don't add any conditions, it is equivalent to letting it default to an empty condition. When it is finished, we let the application system carry out a debugging record. The debugging record here is the statistical result above, and then we feel that the drop-down menu gets its associated parameters, which is its a value that returns the result. Here, let's take a look. Here, we can directly click on such a result to see the above statistical results. What are the statistical results, that is, our 3y? It is proved that there are three rows of such data in the current statistics without any conditions. Let's add a restriction here. For example, we only count people over 20 years old, so here, ah, we need to add a column name. For a two-dimensional array, what is its column name? It's a sequence number of a column of our two-dimensional array, right? So 0 1 that proves that we need to make statistics on the column name whose age is our first. I want to count a value greater than 20 years old in all. Let's have a preview. Here, let's click again. You can see that there are only two people on it. Why? Because only Li Si and Wang Wu meet the conditions, this is an operation of statistics for a column of data. Similarly, I add another button here. When it is clicked, we let it trigger the event of our two-dimensional array. Its next content is our search for a certain value. What is the meaning of searching for a certain value? Did we learn to search for a value of our one-dimensional array before? What does it return? Does it return a subscript? If we search for a value in a two-dimensional number, what will it return? Here we can try it. For example, here we can directly search for a value whose age is equal to 21. When he finishes, we will make a debugging record of the application system, and the value of the debugging record is equal to the return result. Let's see that the above is the search result. Here we will make a simple preview, and we will compare such a value look at the table. When we click on such a search, we can see that he got 1. What is this? This is an array, right? Let's start with the first point. When we expand such an array, we can see that it tells me that its zero is one, and the first is one. What does it mean? Its row serial number and its column serial number are one and one respectively, which seems not obvious. Let's search 2016 to show you. Here we change to a 2016. Let's preview it again. We can see that we click another search here. What is the result one after searching here? First, does it prove that the line number in which he works so far is the same? Do you think the line number in 2016 is 10? 12 is the row number a specifier with the column number 2, so he can find our 2016, ah, so here we know that it actually returns an array. In the array, it tells us where the abscissa of each column and its location mark are. And then we do a trigger through our event. When it is clicked, we execute our two-dimensional array, and then we have the statistical sum and the statistical average. But let's think about it. If we directly count the sum, I say the statistical average, what will he do? Let's have a look. Because let's think about it, that is, if you want to make a statistics, does your horizontal statistics have any meaning? It doesn't make any sense, does it? You must want to make a vertical statistics. For example, here we want to see how much the sum of all their ages is equal to, so here we write 0, 1. 
Is its column number equal to 1? We want to count a value in the first column. Of course, a series of conditional restrictions can be added here. We don't add any conditional restrictions here, so we let him go count all the benefits as a sum, and then when it is finished, we let the application system make a debugging record, and the debugging record is equal to such a value as the sum. Let's take a look at the preview of one of its results, ah, the same first print, let's carry out a statistics. You see it's 64, right? If the column number is equal to 1, all the contents in it are equal to 64. Of course, a series of conditions can be added here. You can count the first column, but if you want to limit his enrollment time, it must be greater than that in 2017. So here, ah, we can also limit one of its columns, that is, its number 0122, that is, the admission time. What should it do? It should be larger than one of our 2017, so that we can add a condition to make a statistics, and we can preview it here. Let's make another statistics here. You see, it's only 20. Why? Because Zhang San is the only one whose enrollment time is longer than our 2017 according to his statistical age, is the final result calculated by him 20? We don't need the conditions here. Of course, when making statistics, we can make statistics in multiple columns, that is, if you want to sum our age and enrollment time, we can think that we can write an array here. Of course, the English corner mark. For example, I want to make statistics on the age. 0, 1 is the first column, right? Similarly, what do I want to count? Statistics of his enrollment time 0, 12, so we can write 1 and 2 here. In this way, we can put an array into it, and it can make a complete statistics of our first column and our second column. Let's take a look. Here we still click our statistical summation. We can see that it will count the results 64 in our first column and the total 6049 in our second column. And will it finally return a one-bit array according to such a structure? This is one of our statistical summation. There are two ways to use dot, and then down to our sorting feature. The sorting feature allows us to sort by a column. For example, here 01 we want to sort the age column, right? So here 01, let's enter the first column, and then let it have a descending order of values. Is this an arrangement from large to small? Here, after he arranges himself, we will let the two-digit array print his own value, show it to us, and let us preview it. You can see that it was disordered at the beginning. Look at 20, 2 and 23. Do you know that when we click a sort, it becomes a 2321 2. 10 becomes an arrangement of a descending area, which is a way for us to sort. In fact, this is very similar to our one-dimensional array, but the one-dimensional array directly allows us to select the sorting method. In our two-dimensional array, because it has a one-dimensional structure, it requires us to select the corresponding columns to be sorted first, and then sorted according to that column. Similarly, we add another button on the page to execute its next event. When it is clicked, what do we let it do? Call our two-dimensional array, and you can see that there is an inverted line. What is the inverted line? Is it that politics has become a reverse order? We demonstrated this in the previous single digit, so we won't do a demonstration here. Similarly, the same is true for a randomly sorted line here, which is to disrupt such a line number. In fact, what does this random sort line look like? Is it equivalent to the function in an array? Because at present, for us, each row of such elements is equivalent to a single element in a one-dimensional array. So is the reverse endurance row here consistent with the endurance removed? There is also a way to parse a column of data. Generally speaking, parsing a column of data is to cast a specific element type to help us convert it to any type of JS. Of course, the precondition is that the data in the column we are writing is itself an object type, so it will help us resolve it. Here, we have not learned our object type format, so there is no resolution. Therefore, when we need to use such a function to analyze certain data, we will give a further explanation, so we are basically familiar with a series of actions of two-dimensional array. Then let's see how we can reference the values of elements in the two-dimensional array. Similarly, we still use the old method, 
and we use the application system to make a debugging record. In the formula editor in the debugging record, we choose to call the contents of our two-dimensional array. Can you see, is the series of contents in this side completely consistent with the series of actions we just talked about? Here, if you have a deep understanding of our use of one-dimensional arrays, we don't need to explain it anymore. For example, here we have to choose the value of a column. What should we do? We can select the value of a column. What is its advantage? For example, we need to take the value of the age column. What is the age? 0, 1, right? It's the first column, so let's write a 1 here. But please pay attention to this. At present, I load such a row of data in this age column. There are several values, ah, three values in it, so what is the printed result so far? Is it a one-dimensional array? So let's preview a result of it. When we click it, we can see whether 22,123 is used as a value of a bit array, which splits us up like this. Similarly, if I want to get another value, for example, here we need to take the value of a certain line, the value of a certain line, for example, I only take Zhang San. Here, Zhang San is a geographic bank, right? So enter a zero in the line number here. Let's read it. When I click, we can see whether a one-dimensional array such as Zhang San has been printed. And you see, this further confirms our previous statement that a two-dimensional array itself is an element spliced by a one-dimensional array. You see, when I print a line when it's worth it, what's this? Is this a standard one-bit array we learned last class, and then we will help you to understand it. For example, we need to get the value in a line. At present, I get the value in a line. What is this? Is this a one-dimensional array? In this one-digit number, I have to get Zhang San's name. What should I do? So here, can I choose a value in a one-dimensional array? Now, if I go through a certain line, do I locate Zhang San's line, and then I take his name? Can I write a zero in the subscript of an element, because the zero is his Zhang San's name? Let's send it to see if the cable printing directly prints Zhang San's paper. Then I want to tell you that this value is completely consistent with our writing below. Here I write a lot of similar writing methods to help you understand what the structure of such a two-dimensional array and one-dimensional array means. This is very important for us to understand the result of our object data. Here, I choose our two-dimensional array to see a usage called a value. What is its line number? Zero, right? So here I write a zero. What is its column number? What column is emotional zero in? It's our Earth spirit power, so let's print and have a look at the Earth spirit here. We can click here to see Zhang San and Zhang San will come out again. In addition to these two writing methods, there are no other writing methods. Here we use our application system debugging records to show you another writing method. So here we can also visit Zhang San through this method and click again. You can still visit Zhang San. Therefore, we must pay attention to that these three methods are feasible and the following series of operations are very, very common operations. We won't do a demonstration one by one here. We must remember living at this point, ah, is a type of point. For example, after I select a line here, what will it become after a line? Does it become a one-bit array? For a row of elements like us, does it become a meaningful number? When I select a row, for example, if we go here to get our first row element, does it become a value of our one-bit array? So if we choose a one-bit array here, we enter one for a certain row. So far, is it basically a one-bit array? Then in the one-dimensional array, I can also perform a variety of contents in the one-dimensional array. For example, in such a one-dimensional array, I can select the number of its elements. We are in the bit array 0, 1, 2, 3 like this, so here we have a preview. When we click it, we can see whether there are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 values the sample is printed. Therefore, we must pay attention to such a point. Each point is equivalent to a complete value, so we can get a new value through a point, and then we need to remember these two writing methods to locate an element through its row serial number, and its column serial number we need to accumulate the usage, 
because it is very helpful for us to understand the structure of the whole two-dimensional array. The above is the whole content of this section. Thank you for watching.